So I'm just going to talk about one verse today, which is Galatians 4.17. And it really interests me because, well, there are many different translations here. New International. Those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. What they want is to alienate you from us so that you may have zeal for them. Well, a lot of these say, isolate you from us. Those people are zealous for you, but not in a good way. Instead, they want to isolate you from us so that you will be zealous for them. Now here with the Berean literal Bible, you get with the italics, what you sometimes get in the King James which is an interpolated phrase. They zealously seek you, not rightly, but they desire to isolate you from us, is interpolated. It is provided by the translator to say, well, this isn't in the text, but it's in the context, or it's implied. It's implied by the context. But they desire to isolate you so that you might be zealous after them. Well, from us is interpolated. Even if you look at the King James, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. Affect or affect is an older form of um, what I think is in the Greek and what they're mostly translating here, the Net Bible. They court you eagerly, but for no good purpose. They want to exclude you so that you would seek them eagerly. Well, you're getting the general sense of it, shut you out, we have here, shut you out in order that you may seek them. But let's take a look at the original Greek, which you have here with Bible Hub. This is why these are so cool, these tools we have on the internet. Uh, let's just read the um, literal translation at the top in boldface. Those people are zealous for you, but not in a good way. Instead, they want to isolate you, interpolation from us so that you will be zealous for them. They are zealous for you. He's talking about the people who are trying to sell them a false gospel. These people are zealous for you, and the Greek is zealousi. So zealous, that's our English word zealous. They are zealous for you, but not in a good way. Why? Well, they want to isolate. The word is eklysai. Strong's Greek 1576, to shut out, exclude, separate. From ek and klio, to shut out. So shut out, separate, isolate. They want to isolate you. It's implied from us, but I think you don't need that because if you leave out the interpolated from us, you get a sense of what really happens. You don't get the ecclesia, the church, you get the ecclesi the isolated. Um, one of Dostoevsky's books, Gabby, is the idiot. And an idiot, that comes from a Greek word meaning isolated, a person on his own, not in communion with others. They want you to be zealous for them. So in other words, every nihilist has an agenda. That's one of my phrases that I've come up with. Everyone who's telling you it doesn't matter, Every heretic has an agenda. Everybody selling you a false gospel has an agenda. They may believe it philosophically themselves, but ultimately they get something from that belief. And you then, if you buy into it, become isolated. Isolated from Paul, isolated from the church, isolated from one another, out of communion, shut out excommunicate it. And this can be done with a certain zeal. This is why we need to study at some point Ronald Knox's book, Enthusiasm, which is about how so many heresies have sprung up in the church from people who are particularly enthusiastic for the faith. Enthusiasm alone or zealousness doesn't cut it. It's not just a question of being all gung-ho. It's a question of the truth. Because we're not just gung-ho about nothing, we're gung-ho about reality. And so the zeal of the heretics trying to sell a false gospel, that zeal is intended to stir up a zeal for them and their message, which will end up isolating, separating, 
and shutting out the Galatians. That's what sin does. Going back to the Lord of the Rings, it occurred to me today, um, with Sauron, the great satanic figure, the great villain, we only see bits and pieces of him. He is not only isolated and separated from any kind of communion with humanity or elves or hobbits or what have you, he's isolated and separated from within himself. He is disintegrated. He has no integrity. How do we know this? Well, we only hear about his eye. And there's a character who comes forth toward the end called the Mouth of Sauron, a human being who doesn't even remember his own name because he's given himself for so long over to the forces of evil. He's lost his own identity and exists only as a body part. The body of Christ are parts that are in communion with one another and working together. Sauron has an eye and he has a mouth. And Isildur cuts off his finger early on in the early war against Sauron and gets the ring by chopping off the finger of Sauron, who is still missing a finger. The same thing happens to Frodo, interestingly, at the end. His finger gets severed, the finger containing the ring. So we see in the Lord of the Rings this imagery of people given over to evil who become disunited, who become disintegrated, whose integrity is lacking, who don't even remember their names, their identities, who become separate little bits and pieces. Again, with pornography. Pornography ain't about lust, in fact, ain't about union with someone you love. It's about a particular part of someone else's body. And so that's the isolation. That's the separateness that comes from following the lie. In other words, I got to go. I've got a class to teach. Holy cow. I can't keep talking into the camera. I got to talk into another camera for another class. But anyway, that's all simply Galatians 4.17.